So are you tired of hearing about the blockchain and just wanna build something using the blockchain? I'm not just gonna talk about Web3 technology. I'm gonna show you how you can use it today, building Next.js apps with Tailwind. So this is the second video of a three-part series. If you didn't catch the first one about the graph, definitely uh, check that out in, on the channel, uh, in the playlist as well. This video is gonna be focused on integrating Web3 technology into a Next.js application. But before I jump in, I'm gonna actually show you the Web3 technology that I'm talking about, which is Zora. Zora is a decentralized platform for hosting NFT content. So this is artwork, audio, video. Uh, this is all hosted on Zora Protocol. Here I can have videos. Uh, I can also filter by music NFTs, which I know it's always, but DRM has always been a problem uh, in the music industry. So it's cool to see that sort of taken off. But this is the basics of what we're gonna be building. And, and this is the final product here, right here on my, my local host. Uh, this is actually some NFT artwork as well. And if I go back into Zora, you can see that these images look rather similar. So here you can see I've got my, my project. And here you can see we got the Zora project as well. So moving along, the other thing I want to mention too as well is I do, I have been using the graph to leverage a subgraph that's been hosted on the Legacy Explorer. Uh, as mentioned, they do have a mainnet explorer which that this shipped uh, at the time of this recording a couple days ago. Uh, so I'm super excited to use that. But for now, we're going to leverage a legacy uh, subgraph. And this legacy subgraph is going to be giving us some content data. So if I want to get those images or the audio, I can get that from there. I can also get the metadata, which is going to have the author's name as well as the other so, sort of bid and asking data. Uh, and I can also get prices. So that's what we have. And the other thing we're going to be leveraging is... Next.js. If you are familiar with Next.js, Next.js is a server-side backed uh, React framework. Uh, but we just want to be able to use a GraphQL endpoint, embed that to a Next.js app, and get started building using Web3 web technology. So I guess we can go ahead and jump in by me just going in my terminal uh, and starting with a Create Next app. All right, so I'm going to jump in my terminal and just go ahead and install the latest Next from NPM. And now that I have NPM installed, I should be able to grab my create next app command there i'll create a next app project name will be i will call this zora next js uh, this is actually going to be installing my next js components so now we have a running Next.js app. I'm going to start the server and let's go check this out in the browser. All right, so here we have a basic Next.js app we had generated. Um, it's going to have some links to documentation. It's going to be some sort of the basic run of mill framework. And what I'm going to do is actually navigate over to my page. And instead of all this context, I'm going to go ahead and change this from create next app to Zora next app. And I think everything else looks fine. The other thing I'm gonna do is replace this uh, content with a simple loading <laughs> context. And I like to do this rather than pull in some sort of loading spinner uh, because I'm gonna change that eventually down the road. Uh, I'm just gonna type the word loading. It also kind of shouts at me to, as something that I should be changing. So instead of having my next app, app set up, I've got the loading, uh, the word loading uh, with, the, with the ellipses uh, preceding that as well. So now that I have a loading on my screen, I'm going to actually set up uh, a way to fetch data directly from our subgraph. So as a reminder, this is our subgraph. Uh, this is the data I want to get. And if I grab this URL, I can set up a client. And I'm going to set up a client using a tool called Urkel. Urkel is a a GraphQL front-end GraphQL client for you to be able to consume GraphQL endpoints. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and create that, import that from Urkel. Uh, and then from there, um, I do want to set up a client as well because uh, I want to consume that data. So uh, this is not the URL I want to use. So instead, I'll use the one I just copied and pasted from the subgraph. And now we can start consuming content. Now. The other thing we're going to need to do is actually add in a query. And what I'm going to do is const query. Uh, and this is going to take in a, a string. I'm going to make some assumptions to your aware of GraphQL. Uh, if you aren't aware of GraphQL, the basics is uh, instead of fetching from an endpoint or a REST API and trying to pick what parts of the data you want, what GraphQL does is you can actually pass in a query to grab the data that you would like to use. So here I've got a query that I've been messing around with here on um, the subgraph uh, because this is a playground. 
uh, I could actually manipulate and see what data I'm actually looking for. And since I'm getting the content URI, which is gonna be the actual image of the NFT, as well as some metadata, which is gonna be like the name and description of the NFT as well. Uh, I already know this is gonna work for me. Uh, also gonna shout out, I'm grabbing some price data as well. Uh, I can go ahead and copy that here. Perfect, so it looks like I got a couple extra spaces, totally fine. Uh, and this is gonna be my GraphQL query. So now I've now at this point created a client, I've got a query, and now I can go ahead and consume that query. And the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna use this, uh, down at the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and export async function. And I'm not gonna call it that, I'm gonna call it get um, server side props. Oop, I should capitalize that too as well, server side props. Uh, what this is gonna do is gonna actually set my props up to be all the data from the GraphQL query. So as the project's loading uh, and rendering on the screen, it's gonna be fetching data uh, in the background. So this is gonna be the way I wanna go. <laughs> this will be the best approach. We could also leverage uh, get static props, which will allow us to host this thing on places like Fleek and Netlify. But for now, we're gonna really focus on just getting this up and running and deployed. So let me go ahead and do that now. So now I'm actually grabbing the client, which I created up above, I'm passing in the query, and then from there I can return the data as props. I do need to actually pass this in as the, the props keyword because that's what I'm gonna be looking for when I do, when I try to access this. Uh, the other thing is I'm gonna grab the data and I'm gonna do data.tokens, and I'll show you why in a sec. Uh, and I'm grabbing uh, data.tokens because this is what I've actually aliased it as uh, here, which is uh, tokens. I've also done a little alias here, which token dot, uh, token ID, which uh, I don't necessarily need, but it was more of just an explanation. Um, but for now, I'll just leave it as this. It was while I was sort of messing around with the uh, subgraph data in the playground. Uh, but I just want to point out that the fact that I'm aliasing all the media data, uh, which is all the NFTs, uh, as tokens. All right, so this looks for the most part good. The only thing that I, I know I'm gonna have to actually do instead of fetching this data uh, is I'm gonna need to actually pass this into a function. Uh, and the reason for passing this context into a function is gonna, I'm gonna have to manipulate some data um, before I actually render the page. So for the time being, uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and create a new fetch data function, and I'm gonna pass in the query as an argument as well. And I'll show you why I'm gonna do that in a sec. So we now need a, a new function, which will make it a synchronous function, uh, and we'll call this uh, function fetch data. Uh, and then this is gonna take uh, the query as an argument, which I failed to put that in there. There we go. And as a query it takes an argument, we're actually gonna place in, this into a function, and it's mainly because we need to um, manipulate metadata here. Uh, and the reason for this is because we need to actually identify whether the NFT is an image, a GIF, a video, an audio file. Uh, and for that reason, we, we actually have to sort of set up some sort of ID system to be able to know how to render audio files and videos separate to how we render images. So because of that, we're gonna have to do that sort of logic here. Uh, for the sake of brevity, I'm all, I've also just got, went ahead and copied and pasted some code I already had prepared. Uh, and what this is going to do is we're going to be taking the fe uh, the client uh, consumption of the GraphQL query uh, and converting that to a promise. Uh, in the promise, we're going to manipulate the data. Uh, so rather than sort of full on just do a single, a single weight, uh, we're going to ma manipulate that data. And as we fetch that data, we're going to do Essentially, this is where to capture the metadata URI, uh, receive that from the IPFS link. And for example, of an IPFS link, I do want to show this. And this is the link that we're going to be fetching. So here we're going to have a, we're going to grab a description. Uh, we're also going to find out if this is a, well, we're going to find out if an image or a video. Uh, we're also going to grab the name from this as well. So a couple pieces of metadata that we do want to leverage and actually render on the screen. So that, that's what we're doing right here. I'm going to constant along the metadata, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, and then I'm doing a conditional to check to see if it's a video. I'm setting the token type to be video. Uh, as I sort of skipped over this real quick, uh, the token data is what I'm actually rendering and mapping over and then setting the, the token data as um, 
sorry, the token data here from my array of tokens that would get returned uh, from the query. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set a new token type as video, audio, or image. Uh, everything that everything that's not a video or audio is gonna default to image because uh, we do have, technically have GIFs or GIFs uh, that will need to also be set as images as well. And then we're returning that token data. Uh, we are catching some errors so that way we don't sort of kill our uh, rendering and uh, because we are going to render this into a react component and then for at this point we can now fetch the data and start presenting that on the screen so now that i have my app compiled successfully uh, we can now see that we're still rendering the loading screen so now we need to do one more thing which is add a new section so the one thing I want to point out is that because we're actually setting these to the props key, we could actually pass this here as props. Uh, and because we have uh, the props data being passed in, we can then go to props as a reminder, it's tokens. Uh, and that's what we sort of set it to. If props.tokens exist and props.tokens.length uh, is greater than zero, we're going to go ahead and, and create another return. And inside this return, uh, we're going to return specifically, and inside this return, we're going to render the NFT data on the screen. All right, so we've got that set up properly, and now within this return, we want to set up a div. So we're going to actually grab the same style, so that way we can have it rendered centrally. And then from here, let's go ahead and uh, render some some data. So what I did is I added a conditional for to around the do return. Uh, essentially, if this, uh, sorry, if there are any tokens inside of our props, uh, we're gonna leverage this return. If there aren't, it's gonna actually show the loading screen. Uh, so that works out pretty well. Uh, the other thing that I need to do, since I do have this head, probably add this head right here. And let's see if we get anything rendered on the page. The other thing is I'm gonna restart the server. You can also see that since I'm constant logging in my fetch data command, uh, you can see my metadata actually displayed it in the console. And now for the moment of truth, do I get something on the screen? All right. And just like that, we have our NFTs rendering on the page. And uh, here you can see some videos, uh, some audio that's being played in the background and some images. So this looks pretty unstyled. I think the next th thing we're gonna do is we're gonna style this using Tailwinds, as well as we're going to check out how we can cache these images uh, in the future. A couple things I wanna point out too that I had to figure out off. There's no guarantee on metadata actually being minted with the NFT. There were some NFTs that had no metadata, so I actually had to do some error handling. Uh, so I did add a catch uh, to console log the error. I'm also returning an empty object. I should probably do something better than return an empty object, but I'm distinguishing those. For those NFTs that had metadata errors, I'm actually returning an empty object. And then from there, I'm actually checking now to see if the metadata itself is indeed, well, I'm checking to see if the metadata itself is indeed uh, coming back undefined uh, using this ampersand shorthand. Uh, the other thing I'm doing and the rendering is I'm also checking to see if token.metadata also is defined. If it's not defined, it will not render on the page. So that concludes this section. I just wanted to point out that if you are at all interested in jumping in and checking out the code, uh, I do have it on the repo on GitHub, so which will be Zora next. Check out the link in the description below. And stick around for the next video where we add some styling to this app with Tailwind.